In today's video, we go road tripping to Alaska. Or do we? Turns out we get stopped at the border. Will they let us in? More on that whole debacle in a minute. However, our plan starting out this day was to head to Skagway, Alaska. Skagway is located about 175 kilometers south of Whitehorse. It's located on the panhandle of Alaska. The drive is incredibly scenic as you head by big mountains, massive lakes, and you go up into the mountains, up over the pass, and then eventually you come down into the coastal area with its massive trees and sea views. It is truly like going to another country. Well, it is, but the climate and everything changes as well. So it does feel like you really are getting away, even though it's only a couple hours by vehicle. So of course we love to travel with our dog Stanley and that's the whole part of the joy of traveling in the van is that we get to take him with us on all of our adventures. In the past it's always been easy to take our dog over the border from Canada to the US. We carry his vaccination records with us and it's never been an issue. Then this past summer the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the States, announced that their requirements for dogs entering the States was going to change and one of the new requirements was that dogs were going to have to be microchipped. There was a lot of talk in the media, Facebook groups, and among dog lovers that this was overkill, especially for dogs coming in from Canada, because our dog is not microchipped, and it would be a hassle as we live in a remote area where the nearest place that we could put a microchip in is over 400 kilometers away, it wasn't exactly a convenient option. In any case, then the CDC announced that they were dropping the microchip requirement, so when the spur of the moment trip came up, we were like, okay, great, we can take Stan, no problem. We didn't exactly think to check on any other requirements and that's where we went wrong. So we pulled up to the border and the guy asked about fruit and veg, which we had, so they pulled us over. Then they discovered the dog. Not that we were trying to hide him or anything. Then we learned that we were supposed to have pre-registered him on the CDC website and without him being registered beforehand, he wouldn't be allowed to enter. Now you might think, well, just go on your phone and register him, which is fine and dandy, but we were up in the mountains in one infrequent bar of service. It took us a lot of patience and a little luck, but we were able to get him registered and then they let us on our way. Phew! Lesson learned for next time. Do your research. Welcome to Skagway, y'all. Skagway, Alaska is a charming little Gold Rush style town of approximately 1,200 people. It's located on the coast and in the summer can be overrun with cruise ship passengers. However, don't let that deter you. There's a lot to like, especially if you can get off the beaten track. One of our favorite walking areas is Yakutania Point, which you access over by the airport. It starts by crossing the river on a footbridge and leads to a trail that has amazing views of the ocean and the surrounding mountains. What is it? <laughs> it's like, what? This trail joins on to a network of other trails that go to various places, but the walk out to Yakutania Point and Smuggler's Cove does not take more than 15-20 minutes and you will be rewarded with these amazing views. On a clear day, you can see right down the inlet. Another interesting place to explore is the Skagway Gold Rush Cemetery, which can be reached by heading to the north end of town and then crossing the tracks. Here you can see the graves of some of Skagway's most famous or infamous characters, including Soapy Smith. 
He was a gangster slash con man who met his fate in Skagway. If you follow the trail, it'll take you to Lower Reed Falls. Reed Falls was named after Frank Reed, who died in the gun battle with Soapy Smith. He is said to be the hero of Skagway. After our walk to the cemetery, we drove to Dai, where we decided to camp for the night in the flats. Dai is located a few kilometers from Skagway, and it was the setting off point for the gold seekers heading to the Klondike Gold Rush. On the way to Dai, there are a couple sites to behold. One of them is a viewpoint which overlooks the town of Skagway. And a bit further down the road, there is an inlet with a beach that has the remains of the sunken Bark Canada. You can walk out to the beach and see the remains of a sort of skeletal shape of the hull of the boat in the water at low tide. It just so happened that when we passed by, the water was at low tide and we were able to get a good view of the remains of the bark. We made it just in time for sunset on the flats. And you can see the crows had come home to roost for the night. They were everywhere. We found a nice little spot off to ourselves and settled in for the night. It was a very peaceful sleep in a beautiful location. Gorgeous. This might be one of the prettiest places we've ever camped. On the tidal flats of Dai. Okay, we're gonna go check out the historic Dai town site. <laughs> Some remnant of a building on 2nd Avenue. Not much left in this town. It's been taken back by nature. Just a grid.
And the reason that the town of Dai sprung up at that site, even though it wasn't a very good place for a port, was because it was at the trailhead of the Chilkoot Trail, the main route that gold seekers to the Klondike Gold Rush gained access into the interior of the Yukon. However, once the railroad was completed through the White Pass, starting in Skagway, the town of Dai fizzled out completely. Although this 58 kilometer or 33 mile route is no longer taken by gold seekers, it is still taken by adventure seekers who wish to hike this historic trail. So this is the start of the Chilkoot Trail, leaves from Dai and goes up over the Chilkoot Pass and ends at Lake Bennett. It is a very arduous hike, but gorgeous. I've done it four times in my life, and I'm very happy I won't be doing it today. <laughs> so I'm just bringing you to the beginning of the trail here, and uh, any hikers that are out there, I wish you luck. This is the start. And it's a bit deceptive because the first thing you do is you go right up a very steep hill. This is what I mean. <laughs> John Matt's going to run up this hill to show you how fit he is. All along the way, there are interpretive panels which talk about the history of this trail during the gold rush, but also the history of the trail and its use by the First Nation people who originally used these trails for transportation and trading. There are also several artifacts along the trail, and it's just so fascinating to think about what it must have been like during the gold rush and even before as people used these routes uh, to make their way up over the mountains and just what it must have been like, you know, with the clothes and the footwear at that time and just what a challenge it must have been. So when you start off this hike and you're all happy and optimistic, you are very quickly within the first few hundred meters jolted back into reality of hiking up a mountain with a 40 pound backpack on your back. I'm good! And he's off. Come here. Hi. Yeah. going. Where's the train going, Stanley? Well, the weather has definitely turned, but colder weather means shorter line at the ice cream store.
If you do come to Skagway and you've got some time and some money to burn, I would definitely recommend taking the scenic railroad ride through the mountains. The views are spectacular. That is, if it's a clear day. One of my favorite spots to go for a nice little hike is the Dewey Lake Trail System. To get here, you cross the railway and then you head up a series of switchbacks. You end up on a little plateau which has a lake surrounded by beautiful trees and you can walk all the way around the lake. It is quite scenic. There are also other trails that head off on different hikes such as to Upper Reed Falls. I highly recommend this area and it never seems to be too busy. This first part will definitely get your heart rate going. There's a communal canoe up here, as well as a kayak and life jackets, but someone didn't take it out of the water. So JM is making sure that it doesn't fill up and get swamped. Look at this end! And after a long hike, it is time for a well-deserved dinner with none other than the famous Alaska King Crab. I know, it's real too. Something healthy before the main event. It doesn't fit in the frame. Did you say one to Taylor? Yeah. Good. It looks extra cold this morning. Time to get out of town. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me because it is a little loud in here and I forgot my mics, but the weather is turned, it is cold, and it's time for us to get the heck out of town. So we are here at Glacial Coffee House getting our morning coffee and breakfast burrito. We're going to stop at the grocery store to get some American hot sauce, and we're going to gas up because gas is cheap, diesel is cheap, and then we're going to hit the road back to Canada. Hopefully the weather will clear it up in time for us to do a hike at International Falls, which is right on the border. It's got some weight to it. You don't really need to go any further for your coffee or fry bread needs in Skagway. It's not too often you get a plastic bag anymore, yet double bagged. Those will make good garbage containers. Okay, let's see what we got. Jumbo Cholulas, two packs, and some pistachios. Kirkland. Here we are at the 
welcome to Alaska sign. Didn't get a picture on the way in. Now we're heading the other direction and I think this is about as close as I'm going to get. The official boundary. So this is the International Falls hike. It's right on the Canadian side of the U.S.-Canadian border. You can see there's the highway sign there. And basically, from this pull-off, you go down here, you have to cross a creek down there, so your feet might get wet. And you can see the trail that goes up to the right of the falls down here. And you can actually hike up quite a ways. And it's beautiful. There's all these different pools and the rocks uh, on either side of the water. But, you know, it's rainy and overcast and foggy. And um, we're not really feeling it. Should you catch yourself up here with some beautiful weather, I would highly recommend it. Just around the corner, there's another pull out. And actually, I think this is where you go down. The other spot had a nicer viewpoint though. There's one brave soul out there who is not being impacted by the weather or letting the weather ruin their plans. To you I say, well done. But it turns out I am more of a fair weather traveler. So I will get back in the warm van on. It's blueberry season. Bloops. Waiting for the pilot car to take us through the slide. Well, I guess the rain is a sign that it's time to head home and summer's done. Back to school for me. Quantic Terra.